I've continued my efforts to work towards getting where I can update the flash ROMs on my system, pulling the latest ROM data from my PC. In a previous video or a couple of videos, I talked about how I'm hoping to transfer that maybe over to an Arduino, and I've been talking about this Arduino Nano, and then from there, get it written down to the actual flash memory with the help of the 8286 processor. And one of the things I mentioned is it would be probably good to maybe cache, bring down, and keep a copy of the BIOS image. And I was thinking I might use a serial EE prom to do that. And so it would basically look like this. I would bring down from the PC the latest BIOS. I would cache it onto a serial EE prom connected to the Nano. And then I would, to actually do the updates, read from that serial EE prom and have my 286 write it to the pair of flash chips sitting there. And of course, to do that, I would first have to copy my active ROM data to RAM and start running the system from RAM so that I can overwrite the flash while the system is running. And all of these pieces I've tested out, and at this point, I do have fully functional transfer of the ROM image from the PC down to the serial EE prom. I can retrieve from the Nano and the serial EE prom to the 286 system. I can write to the flash ROMs. I can do this shadowing. All of those pieces individually I've gone through and tested. I just need to kind of stitch them all together. But with the serial EE prom, I actually found that that's not going to be a solution that I'm going to move forward with. Now, here's what I did do though. I went out and I ordered up one of these little boards that uh, you see down here in the corner. Basically, it's just a carrier for a serial EE prom chip. And you get these, they're you know, maybe a dollar US or two dollars US, they're quite inexpensive. And they really aren't doing a whole lot. It's just a dip socket. There is a pull-up resistor for the two I2C lines. There's a capacitor on the power. There is an LED showing that it has power. There's a small pin header to connect those pins. And then there's four jumpers to select a dressing and write protection. And when I ordered these, they come with a little 256 kilobit IC, that is a serial EE prom. And of course, 256 kilobit is not going to work if I have 256 kilobytes of data. So I purchased a different serial EE prom, and that is a 256 kilobyte or 2 megabit. And I basically took one of those, soldered it onto a dip adapter here, and put that into this carrier. And this was just really for testing purposes. I think what I would do is actually update my 286 board and include one or two of these ICs on the board. And I think I'm going to do that even though I'm not going to use it for the, the original intended purpose of caching the BIOS. But I still might keep a, a, at least one of these on the system board, if not a pair, because it's, it's easy access to, to storage. But then I had connected it, here's my two I2C lines and then two power lines, and I just have it sitting here. And that allows me then to go from the PC, bring it down through serial, and use the Nano to write it to this serial EE prom. Now it technically works, it's just it takes a long time. This is the code I wrote, a procedure to read from the EE prom. I wrote a procedure to write to the EE prom. Uh, this of course goes on the Nano. And then in that nano, basically, I just have to iterate through all of the data, all of the bytes, and retrieve it from the PC, and then write it to the EEPROM. But that process ends up taking over 20 minutes, and so that's not acceptable. I, I'm not going to wait for 20 minutes to update this, plus another couple of minutes to actually do the updating of the main flash chips. So I decided I am scrapping that option. So I am taking off the table uh, the option of of caching the BIOS to a serial EE prom through the Nano. But I still want to achieve that same type of functionality. So here's what I've pivoted to. And still the same steps. It's just instead of the Nano in a serial EE prom, I'm going to use an Arduino Do. This is my favorite Arduino that I've worked with. I, I've used these on previous projects, and I, I really like this Arduino. Uh, now, maybe there's two down downsides to this. Is one is it's a 3-3 volt operation, so all the I.O. 
you need to make sure you're running 3 3 volt and not a 5 volt into it and it's not going to send out a 5 volt so in my 5 volt 286 system that's something i have to make sure i pay attention to and i'm going to use one of these uh, level shifters that i have here i've actually used uh, do with this level shifter in my 65816 system and that worked quite well so i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to pull my spi lines from here run them through the level shifter and then write them or get them connected up to the um, this would be in this case spi so just one of my spi sets of pins down here for this device so there'd be four lines that i'll have to run uh, to, to get that covered now some other things about this do you know it is running this uh, sam 3x 8e processor so it's a faster processor than than what i have on the nano it has two serial ports, which is quite handy. You know, one of those ports actually is your typical, well, well I'll just call it a serial port. It's a, it's a programming port, and that would be this one up here. And that would be the same as what I would have, like on the Nano. You know, I program it through that port, and I can also do serial writes and reads through that port to get to my PC. In addition to that, there's this other port, and this they refer to as a serial USB port. And it supports really serial transfers between this and my PC at 480 megabit per second. That's all theoretical. By the time you do actually do something in the Arduino, there's no way it's going to run at that speed, but it's still going to be much faster than serial, this uh, serial port up here. Uh, maybe one other really big benefit to this Nano is it has half a megabyte of flash on it. And that's, of course, when you write a program, you create a sketch, you know, this INO file, and you upload it to that Arduino, it takes up some of that flash memory. Well, the program I'm going to be running on this is tiny. I think I'll maybe go in here and do a build and show you that, but it maybe is 5K, 6K, 8K. It's, it's not very big. I don't recall the exact size, but it's not, not much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage the top half or the back half of the flash memory to cache the BIOS for my 286. So I'm going to pull it from the PC and I'm going to cache it like I wanted to before, but I'm going to actually cache it on the Arduino itself with its flash memory. And maybe let me show you what some of that starts to look like. So I'll start out here with the Arduino Do, and let me actually open up here the source file for that. And so this is the file that will basically get built and uploaded to the do. And I am leveraging SPI. I'm leveraging uh, this wire library. And I'm also leveraging this library called do flash storage. So if you go into the Arduino editor, you can search for libraries and get this do flash storage. But it lets you essentially treat the flash storage on the do kind of like you would if it was the EEPROM on the do. So I can read it, I can write it, and uh, I'm finding that actually works quite well. So I, I'm going to use that and create this do flash storage, which gives me access to that. I've got a bunch of SPI code, which I'll come back to later. So this is code that from my 286, I'm going to make a call and say, okay, start, start streaming the bytes of the actual BIOS from the BIOS cache so that I can write it to the main ROM chips. To get the cache onto the do, I just have a little loop here, and I'm basically just paying attention. You know, at some point, uh, is, are there bytes available on the serial? Now, but to get to that, I would have a handler for my SPI, and in that handler, if I receive a command that says I want to get the ROM data, and I was going to go to an SD card, but now I'm going to change that and go to uh, this flash memory. But basically, I'll, from my 286, make an SPI call that says, you know, update your cache. And I'll do the date checking like I was doing before, and if the date uh, if there's something newer or something different than what I have in the cache, it'll go fetch it. But what that's going to do when I actually do say um, that I want to you know, pull this down, I'm going to send a command uh, from my 286 up to the Arduino Do, and that will be how I'm going to initiate this streaming of bytes. And, but once the bytes are streaming from my PC to the Do, I'm just going to look for bytes, 
and then I'm going to bring them in. And, and right now, this is probably the least efficient way I can do it. I'm doing it byte by byte and just putting it into a one byte or one character buffer. And, you know, I think I can probably make this code a little bit more efficient, and, and I'll get into that later. But this is just uh, chunking through it byte by byte. So uh, start receiving the serial data on this serial USB, the, the higher speed serial uh, or USB port. And as I get the data, basically just bring it in and actually write it. Now on the Nano, when I got to all the writes and all the overhead in between transmissions of data, that's what really started to slow it down. The Nano just couldn't process stuff fast enough. Uh, but I find that the Do can process it pretty much as fast as I can send it. So in this case, I'm going to receive it from the serial, the, the serial USB, and then I'm going to turn around and write it out to my flash. And I'm going to start at basically zero, but it's an offset at 256K. So that's where it's going to start writing at the midway point of my total flash memory on the do. And then I just write it all of that. And when I'm done, I then send out a message that says I'm done. Maybe one other thing I'll point out in the setup, when I turn the system on, I'm going to have it show me the first 16 and last 16 bytes of data. And that way I can kind of just spot check and see if, you know, did the beginning of the stuff come through okay? Did the end of the stuff come through okay? And that's more for debugging purposes right now. Uh, but at this point, if I was to go ahead and run this, uh, let's just see what I get in my serial output. So let me get my serial console opened up here. So it is uploading this to the do. It just got done uploading. And let me get this window opened up. Okay, so that opened up. You know, I've got this little, you know, start message. And then I read what was on the do. And this is in that flash area. And you can see it's all Fs. Anytime you reprogram the Arduino do, you're erasing all of the flash memory. So if I did have a cache BIOS, anytime I update the code, that cache BIOS will get wiped out, which is fine. Then I'll just resync it from the PC. But right now you can see it's all Fs. And note, uh, I am connected here to COM13. This is the kind of the traditional type of port on the do. It's the programming port. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this other utility, which I've updated. And let me go ahead and run that. I now have support in this utility to connect to two serial ports at once. And that's going to be important here, and you'll see why in a second. So let me uh, get this window drug onto the right screen. And then here I'm going to open up this, what you're seeing in the background, this form real quick. Okay, and then let me get that drug over too. Okay, so here's what this form looks like. First of all, I have what you saw in the last video or previous videos where on the left I can connect to the programming port if I want. I'm not going to do that right now because I have that programming port opened up over here. So I'll use this as my what's going to show what's coming through the programming port. But instead of that, if I wanted, I could just pick it here and connect to it and see the same thing right here in the left window. But now I've also added the ability to connect to the USB, so the serial USB, and that's this port, COM14. So I'm showing COM13 over to the right, COM14 right here, and I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. So I'm now connected, and you can see the speed that, it, that I told it to connect at, which is, what, 26 megabit. Uh, so that's kind of the speed that, I think that's the highest number I can feed it. Uh, and honestly, I don't know if the number even matters. I think I could put in one BPS and it still runs at the USB speed. So it's kind of a pointless value when you start that serial connection. But at this point, I can go ahead and do a transfer. So I'm going to just start the transfer. And I'm going to turn on auto scroll over here because I didn't have that on. And it, you can see that it already sent it a, just a note that transfer has started. And I'm going to go ahead and let this run and talk while this is running, and I'll speed it up, speed up the recorded video here so you don't have to sit and wait through this whole thing. Uh, on the screen, what you're seeing is it's just working through a progress bar. So it's grabbing, while it's doing this, it's, it's from this Windows form, it's opening up this image, g2.bin, from this folder, 
and it's reading through that file byte by byte and every single byte then it sends out through this serial USB over to the Arduino do and this process takes maybe three minutes so we'll see uh, what this actually ends up taking here but as it's running I'm showing well what address am I working with and what is the value that I'm reading as I am pulling from the file now keep in mind my BIOS file you know if I go look at it for a second while this is running you know it starts out with some you know content right this is my code that's at the beginning of that but eventually once it gets through the code it gets to a whole lot of F's and so you, you can see here right now it's working through these F's and you can kind of see the speed at which it's running and eventually it's going to work through enough of those F's and it's going to get to I've got some more stuff in my my ROM later on like at the 3000 well 30,000 here and you can start to see I have some data at that point that won't be F's and you'll start to see this is well this will show kind of bite by bite as it's reading it uh, now I did that just so I could kind of tell what is it reading as it's going through this and you're going to notice that when it's reading FF's it does run faster than when it reads something else in my code I'm checking I read what's the byte that I'm pulling from the file and then when it comes to writing that to the flash on the do I only do I only do the update on the do if the memory in the flash does not match the byte value received through the serial USB and so anytime it has to do the actual write it slows down a little bit so right now it's 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 moving through pretty fast this is as fast as it's going to move without me doing some further optimizations um, but this speed is fine now once I get this programmed once the next time I go to make an update to my BIOS and I build it and I click this transfer again or I submit the request to transfer almost all of the bytes are going to match except for the the minor changes I might have made so most of it's going to run at this faster speed where it's just reading through all these F's and only when something actually changes is it going to write the updates to my cached BIOS so that's kind of handy the Nano I'm sorry, not the Nano, the Arduino Do, even when I take away power, is going to retain the cache of the BIOS. And anytime I go to get an update, it's only going to change the actual bytes that have changed. And so you can see this is working through I got some A's and some zeros now. I must have that in my in my BIOS somewhere. And um, I can maybe scroll up. And so there's a whole bunch of zeros and there were some A's that it's working through. So it's probably in this section here. And now I can see it's ripping through a whole bunch of different values. That's probably a bunch of this ROM data I have. And it'll eventually get through that and get to some more F's until it gets all the way to the end of my ROM data and end up with something that looks like that. So there's logic in the code that says, um, you know, send a byte from this program through serial, serial USB to the do. The do reads the comparable spot in flash on the do and if it does not match it then actually does the right update. And so like right now when it's not matching because the do got reset to all F's uh, it's slower, slower. It runs at a slower pace. You can kind of see the pace at which it runs. But once it gets back into the F's, the stuff where I don't have anything written, it's going to run faster. Now, right now, I'm just doing a test transfer, so I'm just saying do the transfer no matter what is on my PC and whatever is on the, the Arduino Do. But because the Arduino Do was recently programmed, everything's F's, so it's having to bring down every single uh, byte and put it in there unless in my source ROM it is F's. Okay, so that should be getting, you can see they're pretty close to done. You can see how many or what address I'm getting up to, and, and it's going to go to 40,000 is where it's going to end. And I'm reading lots of Fs right now, and you can see that as it's working on that, it's running faster than it was before. Okay, almost done. 
I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for a second. Okay, and that took 332 seconds, so uh, you know, a little over five minutes uh, to get through that, five and a half minutes to get through that caching. And then at this point, you know, it says transfer, uh, or it got to a done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the reset button on the do. And when I press that, let me first of all, I'll just clear this screen. And then I'm going to press that reset on the do right now. And you can see it read really fast. You saw that fill the screen because A, I'm running at 115K for the serial connection. And it read back that data from Flash. And if I want to compare that real quick, you saw it earlier, it was all F. So this was stuff that actually got written. Here's my last 16 bytes. So there's my, uh, let's see, I've got my, actually I took one too many bytes. I have 17 here. So it, it took, uh, it took an FF here, and then it took my EA000C0, and then my Fs. Okay, so that at the end of the data that got written to my EEPROM, sorry, my flash on the do looks good. And if I start up at the top, I'm going to go 31 through C0. And again, I actually have one more extra byte there, but there's my FA. So there's the first 17 bytes. And I think in my code, I just need to, I have a 17 that I need to have a 16 at because I changed some, something in it. Um, but you can see there, and if I hit reset again, uh, you can see what I get there. Now I can remove power from the do, and then reapply power, and I'm going to get the same reading back. And so that's all working fine. But now the nice thing is, is if I go back and I pull up my transfer program again, and I tell it to transfer again, uh, what we should see... Oh, I since I did a reset on the do, it reset the port. So I could, I'm just going to rerun this. I don't have a handler in there to deal with if the port got reset. So let me get that pulled up again. So because I hit the reset button on the do, it reset the connection to this app. And then my app didn't like that, of course. Okay, let me go back to this, reconnect, and hit test transfer. So now I'm going to transfer it again. And you can see it's written through all these values, but you notice it's running at a, a much faster clip because, you know, the values that I'm reading from the flash compared to the values I'm reading from the serial USB, they're all matching because it's it is the same image at this point. And if I had done some minor tweaks, you know, there would be a few, you know, handful of writes or maybe a hundred different writes that'll have to happen out of out of all two hundred fifty six thousand writes here. But this is going to run at a pretty good speed, and uh, we'll see how long it takes. You know, so we saw that the initial population uh, would take, let's just say, between five and six minutes. You know, this is probably between two and three minutes to get the cache written onto my Arduino. And maybe while it's doing that, I can just point out uh, some of the code here. You know, when I go into my uh, application, you see here for the this Windows app that I'm showing, it's opening up a file stream, and you can see that I'm I'm telling it to go out to whatever value was previously stored actually in a in a user configuration file, and I have it so that I can actually pick. So if I want, oh, let me see if I can go find that. I can pick a different ROM image. And so like here, I can change the ROM image. I show a dialog box to let you pick the image. And then I pull out data and I put them into labels. And then I also store them into a settings file. So the next time the program loads, it retrieves the previous values of what you had selected. Uh, but I've got that ROM image. And when I go to say send it, it opens it up as a file stream. And then it essentially runs through all 256,000 bytes of it. And it then writes it to that USB serial port. And that's really what this is doing. So it's pretty simple code. It's opening a file stream, it's chunking through it by, by byte by byte and writing it out to the serial. And then my nano receives it and writes it to the flash. Uh, so in this case, uh, that's still running through. If I go back to the, and if I say nano, I, I'm, I'm meaning do. I've been using the nano so much that I just keep saying nano. But the Arduino do is what I'm working with. 
But in the the do then, uh, back to the loop, it would then come in, that data would come in to this loop, and I'd say, well, as long as I've got something coming in on the serial USB, uh, go ahead and process it. So then I read it, and I write it to the flash, and when I get done with all of that, I then just make a note to show the completion flag, and we'll let that go. So let me minimize this for a second, and we'll see what we end up for time on this. But I think it should be sub three minutes, unless something has changed. But I think uh, between two and three is where I've been seeing it at. But this would be the update that I would do. So anytime I do a build on my 286 code, I would run this to cache it down to the Arduino. And I might even just do that from the PC, not even do it from the 286, just at, at the end of my build process, have it automatically kick this off. So at the, it just starts up a, a separate, not part of my actual build, but it spins off this app, which does the transfer. So, um, so in that case, it took, oh, it looks like a little over four minutes. So I've added some stuff that probably slowed it down. I think I'm, I'd added in all these label updates as it's going, and that's probably what's slowing it down right now. You know, it's not a, a limitation of, uh, and actually we could test that pretty easily. Let's just do one thing first, though. If I go back to my do, I just want to make sure it got done. It did, so I got all the bytes processed. And I'm going to go ahead and hit reset on my do just to make sure that the data still is there. And that data is still there and still looks appropriate. So, okay, all good on that. Uh, I'm going to go back to this program for a second and stop it. You know, and so I've got this label down here. There's a label right here, ROM transfer status label. And in my loop, when I'm sending data, you know, I'm constantly writing to that. And that's just showing what's going on. I also have this do events, which just lets it catch up on things that the Windows form needs to do, like if I'm trying to move the form or something like that. But if I want, I could temporarily take those out. And then I'm going to rerun this and just see if that shortens it up. Because I don't think it's the transfer speed at this point. The Any bottleneck is going to be more on what is the... Arduino doing or what is the PC doing how fast can it render things and I'm running a debug version here so there's so much room for optimization but at least this will give us a comparison quick so I'm going to reconnect and then I'm going to do another test transfer so let's make sure I still have my do is up this is still connected and I'm going to clear the screen just so it's we know what we started here and do another test transfer and there you can see that progress bar is moving quite a bit faster and so that just tells me that you know all of those form paints you know as it's painting that label and redrawing the form and the do events really is impacting performance and so let's see if that gets done and that got done in 24 seconds so you know, if I, if I work on streamlining this, I might maybe get down to 20 seconds. So let's just say 20 to 30 seconds to update the flash on my Arduino do with the latest BIOS information. I'm going to hit reset on my do just to make sure that that data came down. And yeah, that looks good. So I would say at that point, I have a sub 30 second update process. But that's uh, half an hour into this video, just showing you that uh, I now have, it looks like a sub 30 second cache of flash being brought from my PC down to my Arduino Do. So then the next step for me is just to take SPI calls and call that Arduino Do and actually do the updates to the 286 flash chips so that is not going to be a big deal because I've pretty much already done all of that work I just got to get the final plumbing connected here and if I go take a look at my do you know when I look at the code in here I have uh, first of all I have a couple of things I've got this uh, slave began where I'm setting up and a lot of this SPI slave code for the do is different than it would be for like the nano or the mega or something like that and I had found a nice example 
over here from this uh, Mr. Scrith has an example, a short example, but it, it was definitely helpful, so I put a note in there. Uh, but uh, basically in here, I set up my uh, SPI as a slave, and I have the interrupt service routine for it, or ISR for it, or handler. And when it receives a byte, I'm going to then you know, receive in this and then go handle that byte. And when I go handle the byte, I'm actually going to be looking for, well, what command got sent from my 286. So I'll be sending a command, and I probably will not call it copy ROM to... Oh, here, I'll probably just call it copy ROM to do from PC. And so then when I send a command from my 286, I'll have to make sure I send it that three, that's the command, that I'll send it in SPI. And then when that happens, then inside of here, I will um, have to work on my actual code. And this will be something where I tell it I'm going to send 256k worth of data. And then I actually here will do the uh, data sending from the do from its flash cache of BIOS to the 286. And that's all going to be done through SPI. So then I'll just, every time then, for the next 256,000 bytes, the 286 will send an SPI packet, and in response I'll send back the answer. And I'm going to actually set that up so that I'm going to send in the command once, and then every packet thereafter is going to send back the next byte, so I can actually cut the traffic down uh, by doing it a little bit, a little bit differently than I did in my my nano code. And I'll see how long that takes to transfer it that way, and how fast the 286 can process it. Because again, it might be the 286 is the bottleneck more than you know, the, the SPI protocol as a raw protocol. It's more of how I've implemented SPI will be the bottleneck. And I don't think writing to the flash chips on my 286 will be the slow part. They can run pretty fast for updates. Uh, and it does look like over here, if I took out those label updates, we got down to two and a half minutes. So it's a two and a half minute full cache rewrite and then it's a 25 second update or 30 second update when I need to do updates so I'm gonna be happy with that and then if the I don't know I don't know if I should even speculate what it's going to take on the 286 to pull from this cache and then write write the main chips but I would hope for less than two minutes maybe less than a minute you know, the reads from the do's flash are really fast. Um, so if all I'm doing is just pulling down 256K, reading it through SPI, um, that should go pretty quick. Just from an SPI, you know, this might be a one-minute type of update. Uh, so I'm going to guess one minute at this point. We'll see. It might be a couple minutes. But that'll be my, la my last step here is just to get that pulled from this Arduino do flash down to the actual flash memory chips on my 286. Uh, so sorry for making this video so long, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that update, and I think I finally will be at the next video for this specific sub-series should be the completion of, so I will have this running, uh, because all the independent pieces so far have uh, tested out pretty well. Mm -hmm.